Hello everyone, welcome back to Milo eLearning. So today I thought we'd do some conversions. We're going to convert fractions to decimals, and then we're going to do the inverse decimals to fractions, and then we're going to convert fractions to percentages. Now, what I'd like you to do is every time I do a slide uh, or a section, I want you to pause the video, write it down, explain it to yourself, and then rewind if you need to, and then go and attempt exercises. Okay, so let's look at this bar. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count how many pieces this bar is broken up into. So we look 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's broken up into 10 pieces. And now the question asks, how many, what is a shaded fraction? So we look at how many pieces are shaded. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 pieces are shaded. So the numerator would be 6 and the denominator would be the total number of pieces, which is 10. So it's going to be 6 over 10. Now, to write that as a decimal fraction, you can use a really, really easy way. Now, the easy way is you look at the denominator. Now, you see the 1 in the denominator. All you have to do is you're going to say, oh, well, this 1, I'm going to change it, and I'm going to write it as a comma. And before the comma, I'm going to add a 0. Now, there's only one 10, that's one zero, and one digit um, in the numerator, so it's going to be 0, 6. Now, to write that as a percentage, we're going to say 6 over 10. Now, the easiest way to do this is to bring the denominator to a 100. And how can we do that? You can ask yourself. We can multiply it by 10. And whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator as well. So you're going to multiply 6 by 10 and also 10 by 10, and it's going to be 60 over 100. And whatever number is over 100, the top number is always represented as a fraction. In this case, it's 60, so it's going to be 60%. So let's look at converting fractions to decimals. Right. So we're going to do the same example, say it's 6 over 10. So we look at the denominator, the 1 is a comma, we add a 0 before that, and there's one 0 in the de denominator and one number in the numerator, so it's going to be 6. So it's going to be 0, comma, 6. Right, now let's uh, add zeros at the bottom. So we're going to say 6 over 100. Now, there's two zeros at the bottom and one number numerator at the top. So our rule, we're going to say our 1 is going to be the comma. We're going to add a 0 before the comma. Now, because there's only one numerator at the top and two zeros at the bottom, we align this 6 to the last 0. And we can see before the last 0, there's a 0 before it. So we're going to say 0, 0, 6. Okay, so let's look at 6 over 1,000. Here I aligned it. I put the 6 in line with the last 0. And we can see before the last 0, there's two zeros. So we know 1 is our comma. We're going to add a 0 before that. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 6. You can see it's pretty easy if you align it. Okay, now let's look if there's two numbers as the numerator. So it is 25 over 100. So this is pretty easy. Our 1 is a comma. We add a 0 before that, and we just write 25 after the comma. So it is 0, 25. Now let's say we have 25 over 1,000. So our 1 is a comma, we add a 0 before that. So there's one 0 after the comma, and then we write our 25. So it's going to be 0, 0, 2, 5. Now let's look at something totally different, where we cannot take the denominators and multiply it to make 100. 
So or we can do that, but it's not easy by just doing it by 10. So let's look at, uh, say you did a math test and you got 14 out of 25. So the easiest thing to do here is we are going to say how many 25s can go into 100. So we're going to say we can multiply 25 by 4 to make it 100. And whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So we multiply both by 4. So 14 times 4 is 56 and 25 times 4 is 100. So we know that our 1 is a comma, we add 0 before that, and our numerator is 56, so it's 0, 56. Now let's do the inverse, where we're going to convert decimals to fractions. So we have all these figures that we're going to convert. So 0, 5, our 1, one is, our comma is going to be turned to a 1, and there's only one digit after the comma, so our denominator is going to be 10, our numerator is going to be 5, so it's going to be 5 over 10. But we cannot just say 5 over 10, we need to simplify 5 over 10. So we find what's common both in 5 and 10. So 5 is common. So we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5. And 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2, so we have half. So we say 0, 5 is equal to 5 over 10, which is also equal to half. Now let's look at 0, 0, 5. So we, first thing we do, we say how many numbers are after the comma? There's two digits. So we know our immediately our denominator is 100. And whatever figure is in after the comma, we write it as a numerator. So it's going to be 5 over 100. But we can simplify this. You can divide both the denominator and the numerator by 5. And the answer is going to be 1 over 20. So 0, 0, 5 is equal to 5 over 100 and also 1 over 20. That's also equivalent fractions, right? Now let's look at the example 0, 0, 0 7 now. We, there's three digits after the comma, so we know our denominator is a thousand, and seven is the numerator. Seven over a thousand cannot be simplified, so we write it just like that: seven over a thousand. Let's look at zero comma fifty-six. So there's two digits after the comma, so our denominator is one hundred, and our numerator is fifty-six, so it's fifty-six over a hundred. Now we can simplify that, and the easiest way to simplify it is we can see both are even numbers, so we're going to divide it by 2. So we say 56 divided the numerator and the denominator each by 2, and we get an answer of 28. But we can simplify 28 over 50 as well, and we're going to divide it again by 2. So 28 divided by 2 is 14. And 50 divided by 2 is 25. Now, we can't simplify 14 over 25. And that would be our final answer. Now, let's look at converting fractions to percentages. So the idea is basically to equate the fraction with a denominator of 100. Now, if we look at 8 over 10, so we're going to multiply the denominator and the numerator both by 10 and we're going to get 80 over 100 and any number over 100 the numerator is always going to be represented as the percentage like i told you previously so it's going to be 80 percent now let's look at 45 over 100 this is straightforward it's very easy it's the numerator is just 45 percent now, say you scored six, you studied really, really hard and you got 16 out of 20 for your maths test. Now, what are you going to do here? The denominator is not 100. Now, you're going to think, my first task is to bring the denominator to 100. So, what can I multiply it by to make it 100? Then you're going to say, whatever I do to the denominator, I must also remember to do it to the numerator. 
So in this case, I'm going to multiply it by 5, both in denominator and the numerator. So 16 times 5 is 80, and 20 times 5 is 20, 100. So our numerator is 80, and it's 80%. Now, let's say the, you cannot um, uh, multiply the denominator straight forward by 100. So we're going to use division to derive your answer. Now, derive means to get your answer. So we're going to, let's say you studied really, really hard for a math test, and you got um, 28 out of 30. Now, you can see 30 can't be brought to 100. So we're going to divide. We're going to take 28 as a dividend, and we say 28, co comma, 0, 0. And we're going to take 30 as a divisor. We're going to put our division sign. The first thing you're going to ask is, can 30 go into 28? We're going to say no. So you must put a 0 in the quotient part, and you put a comma. Now we're going to look at 280. So we're going to just ignore the commas and do straightforward long division, but we'll just carry the commas in its place, you know, because everything has place value when we're doing division. So we're going to ask yourself, how many 30s can go into 280? So we do multiplication and we say 30 times 9 is 270. So we write our 270 at the bottom. You're going to subtract it from 280. And how many times does it go? We say nine times. And we put our nine in the quotient place, straight above the zero. Then we subtract 280 by 270, and we are left with one. And we bring down the zeros. Now we're going to ask ourselves, how many 30s go into 100? So we do multiplication. We say 30 times 3 is 90. So we say uh, we take the 3, it goes 3 times, and we put it in the quotient place, and we say 30 times 3 is 90, and we subtract it, and we left with 10. Now we ignore the 10, and we're just working with two digits after the comma, which is 0, 93. And we're going to multiply that with 100, and we get 93%. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to like and pause. I put some images for you to view later on. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to pause and enjoy your studying. Bye, everyone. Have a lovely day.